Jess, take it away. Your town center is flourishing, but as the city grows, the need for emergency medical care grows with it. Fortunately, you and your business partners have the wherewithal to build a clinic to help those in need of more first aid. You quickly get a pre-admissions facility built to help process and route the different cases into the appropriate queues. Unfortunately, just before groundbreaking, your differing views of the ideal clinic cause a schism between you and you go your separate ways with patients already lining up in pre-admissions each of you decides to build the clinic of your dreams, trying to hire doctors, nurses, and maintenance staff and build new modules, specialized services, and even parking in order to meet the needs of the patients ailing in pre-admissions. This is your clinic. Build it however you like to give patients the care they need so you can make your clinic the most popular one in town. Or, you know, make money. In this game, you build and manage a medical clinic, attempting to gain the most popularity. You primarily gain popularity in the traditional way, by spending money. However, there are a few other ways to boost your clinic's fame, such as letting some of your doctors work on research. Your source of income is providing suitable care to patients, but this is complicated by the fact that building, staffing, and operating a clinic is not free. I know. Um, patients will queue up for different services. Each patient will have a different severity of affliction, and this is represented by their color. White patients have the mildest problems. Yellow are a little worse off, orange are in bad shape, and red are in critical condition. In order to admit a patient to your clinic, clearly you must offer the type of service they need. Once you get them into your clinic, you will need to move them to a treatment room and send in a doctor, ideally a doctor well suited to the severity of their case. You can compensate for any disparity by sending nurses to assist the doctor. Of course, treatment rooms also require supplies, so you will need supply rooms staffed by orderlies as well. And so on and so forth. So, what are you guys looking at? Well, obviously this is Clinic Deluxe. It looks a lot different than the first version of the game. So what are you guys looking at? Well. On the main board, it's essentially divided into nine main areas. The outside track is the victory point track, or the or the popularity points, or I sorry, the time track. I apologize. The outside track is the time track. The inner track is the victory points or the popularity points. Popularity is victory points. Victory points is popularity. So keep that in mind tonight. Now, over on the far right at the top is the turn track. So there are going to be six rounds in this game, as you can see. Below that is the turn order track. We're going to randomize that before we get started. Now, over on the left-hand side, the building action descriptions and rules for building your clinic, as you can see here. So you can see that this symbol represents the building actions there, then moving uh, over to the right, we have hiring, which is going to be the university as well as the community college, which are going to be the hiring actions. So doctors, nurses, orderlies, and we have a little parking lot down here. Everybody in the car or everybody in the game drives a car. So there's the supply of cars down here at the bottom. Now moving to the right, we have the patient uh, admissions, patients awaiting being admitted to the clinics, their specific maladies and their severity of those maladies and below that is a track for the three actions per action phase as you see there in movement and the time associated that it costs for moving then over here we have the business phase now the business phase it's basically a reference guide there on the board to show the amount of income that potentially you're going to make and expenses that you're going to have to pay each round along with the cost of buying that ever elusive popularity and finally there's the admin phase which shows the upkeep or refresh steps that we're going to be covering each round and now off board there are various modules and tiles that we're going to be building within our clinic. So we have all of these up here and we have other tiles and other things that we're going to be building as well. And then down here in the bottom right hand corner, we have these starting bonus tiles. Now there are seven bonus tiles, but you're only supposed to put out one, uh, one more than the number of players. Hence why we only have 
five of them out there. Then moving over to the player tableaus here as you see. So this is everybody's individual clinic. Now, I should point out that mine actually has one more floor than you guys can actually see, but I wanted to keep it zoomed in so you guys would be able to see everything very clearly. As I mentioned, there are four floors. The first floor is floor zero, as you can see, or the ground floor, and then it counts up from there. First floor, second floor, etc. Within that, there is a four by three building grid where we're going to be building modules, like so, entrances, like you can see right here at the bottom. Then there is street parking, which are the actual grid locations you can park a car on. There is also 3D adjacency, which we're gonna cover all this as we go along. Just know that this space is going to be adjacent also to this space up here. Then over on the uh, left side, there is a building or guide cost kind of for right here as well as the different costs for the different floors. Then there are some rules reminders over here on the right side of each of the floors as well. And then going further out to the right are the pre-admission spaces of the five different specialties that patients are waiting, where they're going to be waiting to be seen there. Then at the very bottom down here, you can barely see the red edge here. Those are the action spaces for the chosen actions each round. Those aforementioned actions are going to be, rep be represented by these six action tiles that represent the three available types of actions that you can do in a given turn. Then there is a, everybody starts with one basic or one white level doctor here. The doctor's car, I like to think of it as a Maserati. Then there are three starting modules that everybody starts with. There is a psychiatric service hub, as you can see there. There is a treatment room, which is this kind of orangish colored tile, the parallelogram, and it also has a little T on it that's very clear in person. I don't know how well it translates up on the camera, however, but that is a treatment room. And then over here is a pink supply room with an S on it next to it as well. There are entrances that we're going to be building. That's the little one down here on the edge that has a, uh, that's over here on the space with the arrow. Then everybody starts with $15. We're using poker chips as opposed to the, uh, the Martin Wallace plastic money that normally comes with the game, or at least did in the original version. And everybody has a player aid. Now I should point out that this player aid is actually from the first edition of the game. It, the, the iconography and the, the graphic design is not going to match between the two, but it's better to have this in front of us as opposed to not. So keep in mind, obviously, again, it's a prototype, so we're using some of the stuff from the original edition as well. And on that, I'm stressing again that this is a prototype. New graphic design and pieces. All the wooden pieces are from the original clinic. So anytime you see cubes, I think I believe these are going to be custom meeples, so on and so forth. Uh, and also, this is a, another really big biggie, is the rules are not finalized. So please, check the Kickstarter for changes. It's likely we're gonna stream this again with the final version ahead of the release, so keep all of that in mind, all right? So, without further ado, let's get into how you play Clinic. In Clinic Deluxe, you build and manage a medical clinic attempting to gain the most popularity as we have aforementioned. The basic flow of each round has us players simultaneously and secretly choosing one of the three main actions, either building our clinics with modules and various other needed items, hiring staff, which includes doctors, nurses, and orderlies, or admitting patients into our pre-admission area over here to be able to then treat them and thus get paid. Now, after we have chosen one of these options, we all reveal which of the three actions we're gonna be carrying out then in building, hiring, admitting order. And within each of those in turn order for any players that share the same action, we take that action. We're gonna do this three times each round 
Then simultaneously move each of our people, staff and patients into and around our own individual clinics, ideally to maximize profits. Then we're going to get our income for treating patients, pay our upkeep costs, and then and only then can we buy popularity with the profit made this turn. Then we perform some cleanup and then prepare for the next round. Now. Patients here, I want to stress this here, patients are going to queue up for the different services. There are five different services available in this game. Each patient will have a different severity of affliction. This is represented by their color. So white colored patients have the mildest pro problems, yellow are a little bit worse off, orange are in pretty bad shape, and red are in critical condition. In order to admit a patient to your clinic, clearly you should offer the type of service they need. Once you get them into your clinic, you're going to move them into a treatment room, manipulating them around onto your board, and then send in a doctor. Again, ideally a doctor well suited to the severity of their case. You can compensate for any disparity between the patient level and the doctor level by sending in nurses to assist the doctor. Of course, treatment rooms also require supplies, so you may want to staff orderlies for the supply rooms as well. Remember, time is money, so to speak, and money buys you popularity. So plan well. All right, so the game lasts six rounds, as we had mentioned. Each of those com comprises the same sequence of phases. We have actions, the first phase, which is going to be the meat of the game. Then there is the business phase, which again, you're going to make money and pay your upkeep by uh, popularity or victory points. And then administration, which is kind of an upkeep, get ready for a reset phase for the next round. So the majority of this teach is going to be spent going over these actions over here. So phase one, the actions. During that phase, each player is going to perform three actions. However, for each action, everyone's going to simultaneously choose which action tile they wish to use, and then the chosen actions are revealed in, a, in uh, are resolved in a particular order. The specific, specific procedure for each action is as follows. Everyone secretly chooses one of their actions and then we reveal it. So let's say I say, I'm going to build, and you know what Greg says he's going to uh, uh, hire, and then let's say Jess also says she's going to build like so, and Rand does something he's going to hire as well. So no one's going to be emitting for this first series of phases. Then in the, uh, the selected actions get resolved. Anybody that chose build is now going to build. So builders first, builders build, hires hi hirers hire, and then patients are admitted. Easy enough. Now, if multiple players selected the same action, they carry that action out in turn order. What does that mean? Well, if you look that both pink and green both chose building. So then we're going to build, but green's going to go first, then pink will go. Then when we get to the hiring, those two both chose to do hiring. So Rand would go first and then Greg would go and then we would skip obviously since no one chose the admitting, okay? After everyone has performed their actions, new patients are going to then queue up out here and then note here that you only have two of a given action tile. So at most you can choose a given action twice maximum per round. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's go ahead and go over the specific actions and here. Okay. What's up? I'm just getting uh, some colors out so we see whose colors are. Oh, to be able to put them up there. Yeah, that's a yeah. good idea. All right, cool. I'll just put it up there. There we go. Yep. Easy enough. All right. So action one, building. You may build up to two components. You know this because on the tile, it actually has a little times two on it, as you can see. So that is your reminder that you can build any two components paying the associated cost. Now it's $2 plus $1 for each floor above the ground floor that you build. So you'll see that it's $2 to build any of these modules down here on this floor. So for instance, if I were to have built these buildings here, that would have been a total of $6 since it's $2 a piece. If I had built them up here, it would be $2 plus $1 for each floor. So uh, plus an extra dollar per build. 
So all modules, entrances, and I suppose I should show you guys it here, all modules, all entrances, all helipads and gardens, all parking lots, and all conveyors all cost that same price. There is one exception, which is the supply room modules. These guys right here. You only pay an amount equal to the floor they're on. So you would pay $0 if building the supply room on the ground floor. You would pay $1 on the first floor, so on and so forth. That makes sense so far? Yep. yep. All right. So the construction rules. Now, these are outlined over here on the left-hand side. This shows all of the prerequisites and all of the construction rules for all of the different modules and all the different things that we can build in this game. We're going to go over these in detail because they can really trip you up as you're learning the game. There are also some general rules that we need to lay down. So think of them as ground rules that we need to establish here. First off, adjacency. Adjacency is always orthogonally adjacent unless specified and also it's adjacent in 3D. So I'm gonna break these out a little bit and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So this module right here, this space is adjacent on all three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So what does that mean? This space, this space, this space, this space, and the one directly above it, which is that one there, is also adjacent. If this were up here, these four blue areas are adjacent, as is this one and this one up here are also directly adjacent. So potentially up to six spaces if it's on one of the middle floors. That is a very, very important key principle that you need to understand. We're going to be building in 3D. So is that clear to everybody? Yes. yes. All right. Clear and very difficult. Yes, it is. <laughs> no doubt. I did say that this game is hard, mm -hmm. right? Now, to be able to build on a higher level, it has, to be uh, it has to be supported by a module down below it. So if I built this here, I could then build, say, something on a second floor or on the first floor, as it were, the second, you understand what I mean, <laughs> like so. However, I could not build, say, this here. Why? Because you can't build over air. It must have something physically below it in which you can build up on. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. No All cantilevers. Right. Got it. All right. In addition to that, no modules of the same color may be adjacent to one another, even if technically different rooms. So you'll notice that this is a psychiatric ward or a, psychi a psychiatric service hub. I cannot, even though this is an orthopedic service hub, they are still the same color. Therefore, that is not allowed. It is supported by something underneath it. However, they are adjacent. Why? Because 3D adjacency says they are adjacent. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, ground floor spaces may have cars parked on them via street parking. So think of the borders, and you can kind of see the outlines a little bit here, and it's very clear in person, but anywhere you two of these on any of these space edges, if you will, okay, any of the lines or borders of a building space. These are street parking. However, separately, in addition to that, there can be gardens, like so, all right? If in either of these cases, no parallelogram module may be built in a space that is obstructed by cars or gardens. So what does this mean? This space is now blocked. I could not build something next to it because it has a car partially blocking that space. Mm -hmm. If I had put this car, say, over here, this space is no longer blocked. Easy enough, right? I think that's pretty clear. And it may end up to where you have, pardon me, you have multiple cars out here like so. So in this case, this space is now blocked. This space is now blocked, and obviously the garden is already built, so that space is blocked. And when I say parallelogram, I mean modules such as these treatment rooms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is legitimate. That's okay because that is not taking up one of those spaces that the car is blocking. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, lastly, you are allowed to build separate buildings within your building grid. 
kind of forming a, a sort of clinic campus, if you will. However, once you have built separate buildings, they can never be joined. So for instance, if I were to build, and allow me a little indulgence here, normally this would not be allowed. However, those are two separate buildings within the same campus. They can never be joined. What does that mean? These spaces can never have one of these modules placed in between it to then join the two buildings. That can never happen, ever. However, you could park a car, maybe it's a parking lot in between, so on and so forth, okay? Does that make sense? Are those ground rules clear as far as all the rules for building? Yes. Okay. okay. All right, now we're gonna go over the specific items that can be built during the building action. And I'm gonna wipe all of this out to be able to show you guys things very clearly out here. All right, so on the main board, we're gonna go at this kind of top to bottom-ish. So the first thing, service hubs. There are five different types of service hubs. Why? Because there are five different types of patients that are going to be coming in to our clinics, in theory. Each floor of each building may only have a single service hub. So what does that mean? Everybody starts with a psychiatric service hub, like so. If I want all of this to be in the same building, that means I cannot place, say, the orthopedic one anywhere on this first floor. I also, again, I'm reiterating, but this is an important point, they cannot be adjacent to one another. What I could do is, I could build it like that, provided something here were built to be able to support it. Mm -hmm. So different floors, unless they're different buildings, but if it's going to be one building, different floors for different service hubs, all right? And each player may only have one of each type. So I can't have two psychiatric wards, one here, one there, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Again, adjacency. I'm driving that point home because it's really easy to forget that, okay? So that's service hubs, okay? Moving on. And you'll also notice that there is iconography up here to show you that nothing of the same type can be adjacent to one another up here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. You are allowed to build one service hub per round. You can only have one of each type of service hub and only one service hub per floor per building. Easy enough. I'm not gonna belabor that, let's move on. Moving on downward, we have the treatment room. There are no rules for construction, ah, except for adjacency, because everything has adjacency rules, right? However, to be usable, to have a usable treatment room, it must be adjacent to a service hub on the same floor, and it must be adjacent to a supply room, but the supply room can be on a different floor. Okay, that was a lot of words. Let's try and explain this. So we have a, we have a service hub here for a treatment room to be legitimately used, it must be adjacent to a service hub on the same floor. Okay, checks out, step one, good. The second step is there must be a, a supply room adjacent to that treatment room, but that can be on a different floor. So in that case, I, there are three legitimate placements for this, for this supply room. That is one, good to go, it's now a viable treatment room. That is one, that is also a viable. And the other one is I can put it up here because remember, it is adjacent and it can be on a different floor. The service hub can't be, but the supply room can be. So now this is a usable treatment room for the psychiatric service hub. Dropping supplies through the floor. As you do, okay? <laughs> you know those little bank tubes yeah. that they, right? You hit a button and right. it's a little vacuum it's tube that sucks it on, to, there you go, boom, done, problem solved. Okay, is this clear? And also yep. note that the supply room is supported by something underneath it, so ergo, that is a legitimate build. Yep. Cool? Yes. Yep. All right. So what is this uh, little parenthesis? All right, here? well, let's move on back over there and I will do exactly that. So you'll see that the parentheses here say that it can also, this one time and one time only, when you build a treatment room, it comes with a free supply room. What does that free supply room mean? Well, that means you get a supply room from the supply, ha, pun intended, 
and you can build it immediately. So this supply room that I have here, actually, if I place it down here, it is free because it costs no money. And more importantly, because you're allowed two builds on a, in an action that allows you to build three modules because one module, two module, and this came free. And if I had built it up here, I technically would have had to have paid a dollar to be able to pay for it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. All right. So moving on to supply rooms. Supply rooms can support multiple adjacent treatment rooms. Okay, I know I keep bouncing to the other Tableau camera, but here we go. So what does that mean? All right, this supply room is directly adjacent to this treatment room, and it's also directly adjacent to this treatment room. So it can supply both of those. Now, note that this one is not a usable treatment room yet because it doesn't have a service hub yet. But if it gets another service hub here, but again, it would have to be supported by something else down below it to be able to build there, then it would be a viable use in that one supply room can service both of those and possibly more, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, right. and just because the treatment room is adjacent to the service hub below, it is not actually usable by that. Right, because hub. the treatment room must be on the same floor right. as the service hub. Right. Okay, so this treatment room cannot be used for psychiatric patients. It can only be used by, say, orthopedic patients that are there provided you had already built something underneath it to then be able to support that. Yep. Yo, dog. I hear there's a lot of uh, a lot of placement rules, but there you go. I'm driving this point home because this is really hard <laughs> to grok yes. for me. And I'm, I imagine others feel the same way, but I imagine most of y'all out there are probably smarter than I. So I digress. That's the supply room here. Okay. Now we're moving on to the special buildings, the blue buildings here. Again, may build one per round. You can only have one of each type. And the operating room has a special rule. So we're gonna go over what these are very briefly here. So I'm going to point to them up here and I am not, eh, you know what? Yeah, let me have them. There we go. Some. Just one of each. All right. So the first one that we're gonna talk about here is what we're calling the waiting room, even though technically it's not, but I, anyway, moving on. This can be built anywhere, but as always, not adjacent to another specialty room like that. That is not allowed, right? What does this do when we get to movement? It reduces movement time by three points. Easy enough, okay? Then there is outpatient care. Outpatient rooms allow the treatment of any patient with any doctor, but it only earns you six bucks. And all this is written on the actual tile itself. And it's six bucks versus the normal amount that you would get to be able to treat that, uh, to be able to treat that patient. Next up, we have a lab. A lab trains up a single doctor, two steps, and it gains you one popularity. Awesome, nice. And then, then there is the operating room. Operating room is essentially a fancier uh, treatment room. They work identical in that they must be directly adjacent to a service hub and they must be supported by a supply room. So it, that is a legitimate build. That is good. I said they're identical. However, you'll notice that they have little blue markers on it. This comes with one implied permanent nurse. Okay. Does that make sense? So they're an upgraded treatment room, if you will, because they come with a nurse. What does a nurse do? We'll get to that. So hold your horses or hold your nurses, as it were. Wait, never mind. Moving on. If this is used, however, you have a higher upkeep cost. I mean, it does have to be sterilized. It's an operating room. That makes sense thematically, correct? Yes. All right. Now, each player can only have one of each of those specialized rooms, as I mentioned as well, or special rooms, okay? Any questions on that? Good, nope. moving on. Next up, we have gardens, not the Boston garden, but gardens, okay? So gardens, these must be built on an empty ground floor space, kind of like what I had shown you guys earlier. So gardens, like so, and then Think atrium when you think gardens, because the only thing that can be built on top of a garden, more gardens. 
because trees build up. You, there you go. I mean, I don't need, yeah, easy enough. Next up are entrances. So we everybody starts with one entrance, and you'll notice that there are spaces all the way around the sides of the ground floor. You can add more and more entrances, like so. Again, remember, it's a prototype, y'all. So these will be double-sided in the final version, I know that. So more and more entrances. The first entrance allows access to the ground floor service hub. So if I build this service hub here, that first entrance either is there or over there. Subsequent entrances can lead to other existing modules on the ground floor only. Why does that matter? Because time is money and money is points. So you want to make the travel time for everybody in your clinic as short as possible. Ergo, you're going to want more entrances. Plus, there's going to be a tie-in when we get into admitting patients as well. Any questions on entrances? No. no. All right. Next up, and these I'm actually not going to build. I'm just going to show you guys helipads. Helipads are where helicopters come in. These act as rooftop entrances, which are five-way entrances, not upwards, obviously, because nothing can be built above a helipad. So if I were, for instance, if we had built something like this, that helipad is now an entrance, a five-way entrance, maximum. Well, in this case, it's a four-way, here, 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 and here it's directly adjacent, so that's gonna be nice. However, it locks down this space and the one above it because nothing can be built above a helipad because your helicopter isn't going to try and just maneuver in like Tetris to fit it in in between floors. That also makes sense, right? Yes. So that's helipads. We're almost done with the various types of buildings. Next, we have parking lots. In parking lots, right here, there are two levels to parking lots. And you'll have to forgive me, these are from the first edition. But parking lots can hold up to two cars, and they can be upgraded to hold up to three cars. When you build these, you can immediately place two and or three, respectively, cars from all of your patients, all of your doctors, nurses, and orderlies into this area. And in addition to that, not only can that parking lot hold three cars, but you still can have street parking all the way around it like so to be able to maximize your space like thus. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. The very last thing that we need to talk about now are conveyors. All right. Conveyors are these little discs, at least in our edition of the game. These act like teleports for any person from any one existing conveyor in your clinic to another. So the first time that you build a conveyor, the conveyor company gets you hooked up with a buy one, get one free deal, i.e. you get two conveyors. So what does that mean? Let's say I build one here, or better yet, I build one here and I build one there. The first time you build it, the two conveyors in which you build must be on the same X, Y, or Z axis. So that is legit because those two are... Now, if I had built something else up here, and let's just say for argument's sake, it's like so. For free, any person in your clinic can then teleport to those two spaces. On subsequent builds, if you build more conveyors, they must share in access with one existing already one conveyor. So in other words, let's say I built one here, then maybe I had built this like so, ignoring adjacency and all those other prerequisites or whatever. Let's say I end up with something like this. I then freely, when we get to the move step, can move anybody that is here freely up to there for zero time, whereas normally it would take one, two, three, four, five time. Now it's whoop, free, zero. So they essentially, they're teleports. Does that make sense on conveyors? Yep. yep. Okay. One conveyor network in your entire clinic, and it can span different buildings, but again, it has to share an access in common with other, with at least one terminal. Okay. All right. So that, folks, 
are all of the different build actions. That's a lot of information, but that's why we do playthroughs right after this, so it makes sense to give you guys context. Any questions that you guys have for any of the building rules or prerequisites? No. Nope. All right. Moving on to the second one. Action. Number two, hiring staff. As you admit, more and more patients, you're going to need to hire more and more staff, right? You can hire one doctor and or either one nurse from the community college or an orderly from the community college. So one doctor and a nurse, one doctor and an orderly, or just one nurse, or just one orderly, or just one doctor. You pay the associated cost that's visible before taking them off the board. All right. Then you take a matching number of cars from the supply and add them immediately into the parking lot or street parking on your player board. If you hired this free doctor that's low value, right? That's or even the, the higher value doctor, maybe you hire this two dollar one and a nurse. Awesome. So maybe that's free, but they come with two cars. If you cannot park the cars, if you don't have enough room and you cannot park the cars, you cannot hire them. They have to have free parking because that's really important here in Boston, okay? And yes, even if they arrive via helipad, their car is brought with them. Yes, and again, if you can't park their car, you can't hire them. Okay, that's it, that's hiring. Any questions? on hiring. Nope. Nope. All right. The last action here is admitting patients. Admitting patients to your clinic may be the start of a logistical nightmare, but the patients have a very, very bad case of full wallet syndrome, and they really need to, you to cure them of that full wallet syndrome, i.e. get you paid. So, if you selected the admit patients action, you can bring patients from those various queues into your pre-admission areas. Taking patients from a specific queue into your pre-admissions area is how you get patients into your care so you can move them into your clinic and start treating them and making money. Each specialty has its own queue. So we all start with a psychiatric service hub, but then there is the cardiology, there is the ophthalmology, there is the orthopedic and neurology. I am impressed that I memorized those. So there we go. Those are the five out there. All right. The process of getting patients from cues into your pre-administration area in your little holding area, if you will, uses cue points. The number of cue points that you have available to be able to do this depends on the number of entrances and helipads that you have. Everybody starts with one entrance. Everybody starts with a base value of one cue point. You get one additional cue point for each additional entrance and helipad that you have on your board. So in this area, I have a base of one. I have another entrance here for two another entrance there for three, and a helipad here for four, I have four cue points of which I can spend a maximum of four cue points. Now, you can only spend your cue points on incoming patients. What is an incoming patient? They move from here and go onto one of these cues. If they do not end up here, you are not admitting that patient, meaning you cannot use the cue points to mess with the order out here for the various actions that I'm about to go over. Is that clear? Yes. Yep. You have three options that you can spend your cue points on. The first one is advance a patient. So let's say there are a number of patients out here. Throw out some more. There we go. So let's say it's like so, like this. Yep, that'll work. There we go. Advancing a patient basically allows them to jump the line. So in my example, I had four cue points and I have, say, I have this uh, psychiatric patient and I want the harder patient because he's going to get me more money than a lower uh, malady is suffering patient. Okay. So for one cue point, they can move up one space. That's one. That's two. 
and then I have to admit that patient, right, because I messed with their order in here, and then I would take them from here and move them up to the psychiatric queue or pre-admission for a total of three queue points used. So I still have one left. Well, that's it advancing a patient. And then as soon as there is a blank space like so, those immediately slide to the right. The next thing is admitting a patient. Just take the rightmost and then admit them. So now we're looking at this and even though I don't have, say, an ophthalmologist, but maybe I plan on getting one throughout my turn, so I can go ahead and just admit this patient. They will then come over here into my ophthalmology pre-admission and that's my fourth point. Okay, easy enough, done. And there's nothing to slide right on that, okay? The third thing that you can do with your cue points is switch cues. You can swap a patient with another or an empty space in the same column in a directly adjacent queue. I'm stressing that, okay? Because psychiatry is only adjacent to cardiology. However, cardiology is adjacent to both psychiatry, uh, psych psychiatry, thank you, and ophthalmology. So what does that mean? Well, there is nobody here in ophthalmology, but maybe I want to because maybe I had extra cue points. I can then move that down. Yes, you're right. They came here with eye pain, or in this case, chest pains. We think it's psychosomatic, so maybe you should see a psychiatrist instead. So, no, no. I know why you were here, but no, no, we're gonna move you around. Trust us, we're doctors. Again, did I mention that dark humor? And those would then slide over. But I could not do that unless I then admitted that patient, remember, into my pre-admission. You can't just juggle things around to mess with other players. You can only do it if you then admit that patient. Going back to this example here, if I wanted, I could swap these two, so moving like so, and then I could admit one of them. Okay, easy enough, but as it were, if I swap this one down with an empty space, I then must admit it there as the ophthalmologist or in the ophthalmologist pre-admission. Does that make sense? Yep. You can swap with another patient or with an empty space, but you must admit them when you mess with them, whether it's jumping up the queue, up the line, up that way, or uh, uh, adjusting what uh, malady they're suffering from. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. And again, anytime gaps form, you slide to the right immediately. You can repeat the above options. And I, I've already driven this point home. You have to admit when it's all said and done. Any cue points that you do not spend during this action go to waste. You cannot save them for later. And you only have room for four patients for each of the, four, of the five different service queues. If you have four there already, hey, guess what? You can't admit any more patients for that service. Oh yeah, and don't forget, each patient, yeah, they come with a car as well, okay? And just like the hiring of other folks, if you don't have room for the car, you can't admit the patient, okay? Those are the three available actions that we're gonna be able to take. We're gonna do that three times. After each time, after we are done admitting patients for anybody that admits patients, we are then going to add new patients to the queue. So what does that mean? We're going to add one to each of the five services, unless they're full. If they're full, we don't fill them, obviously, and we always start top to bottom. All right, if it's not the third action round this turn, we then move this over, then we're all going to draw or secretly select one of our available ones, and then we're gonna reveal it, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing again. And then we're going to do it again. If it is the end of the third action, we're gonna then move on to the move step, which is shown down here. So the move step, okay. Whew. Let me go ahead and try and reset my board a little bit clear some of this stuff out so I can make a viable example for you guys. A moment. Talk amongst yourselves while I set this up. Okay, good job with that. All right, cool. How about that Boston traffic? <laughs> Boy, you ain't lying. Boston All right. is an hour and away from Boston. 
<laughs> that is not untrue. All right, so when we get to the move step, simultaneously all players move their doctors, nurses, orderlies, patients to a legal location within their clinic. Now, you'll notice that I have two patients over here and I have two staff. What does that mean? That means I should have four cars out here. So I had room for it. We're going to remove these for now. There we go. The most common goals for movement are as follows. Getting patients into treatment or operating rooms connected to the correct service. So notice, psychiatrist, psychiatry, that is legit because again, it's adjacent to both of those, which it must be, okay? Or possibly to outpatient services. Get doctors to patients matching their colors as closely as possible. We'll talk about that here shortly. Getting nurses to help those mismatched doctors and patients or get everyone to a legal location by the end of this phase. There are a few other reasons to move people around, but we'll cover that later. All right, it's important to note, once a person has entered your clinic, i.e. move from an entrance here, or from pre-admission to an outpatient room or anything, they cannot leave the spaces on your board here. The only way for a patient to leave, one of two options, here, or um, <clears throat> die. Those are the only two ways. Once they're here, they can hang out here, but once they come onto your board, including staff, they're here, okay? Each move into your clinic from an entrance or helipad to an adjacent space costs one movement point, and you advance your disc on the time track. And the time track, again, is that track around the outside, okay? The waiting room grants a discount of up to three movement added to your time track, which I mentioned earlier, okay? Time spent previously is never reduced, however, and you cannot go negative movement. There's no going back in time. So let's go ahead and talk about how movement would look in this example. So I have a patient here that is needs to be treated in the psychiatric service. Okay, that's down here, good to go. So they're going to come down to the entrance as well. I have a doctor and I have a nurse. That's one, and moving into a treatment room, that's two. Then the patient comes in, that's three, that's four. When we get into treatment, we're gonna talk about how this is not okay, So and nobody can hang out in entrances, so that's five, and the nurse comes in, and that's six. So now we look at my board, nobody's hanging out in an entrance, everyone is in a legal position, this person's just going to hang out, why? Because I don't have an ophthalmology service hub yet, so I can't do anything about them. They're just going to hang out there, that is legal. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Alright. So everyone's in a legal location within the legal limits of a given room, and I should point out that there are little handy dandy little charts as to the legal limits for the numbers of how many people. It's also actually on the tiles themselves, but for reference, and I'm sure this is going to look a whole lot prettier in the final edition. There. Now, patients that go into an outpatient treatment room, they teleport from pre-admissions into the outpatient and then teleport out. So there is no time spent for the patient. They just teleport in, it's outpatient. They teleport out. But you only get six bucks, which is going to be far less than what you would normally get for them. All right, moving on. We have this done with movement. I'm all in legal locations. Now we move into phase two, which is business. Make sure you're wearing your business socks. Finally, we get to make some money. In this phase, you're gonna evaluate patient care and income, pay your expenses, and gain popularity, potentially, according to your performance. Now, patients who receive treatment will generate income for you, and the, the patients in the outpatient services, treatment rooms, and operating rooms only. The aforementioned outpatient services, as I mentioned, regardless of what color patient is in there, they're gonna get you six bucks. And it does not matter, one patient one doctor, colors don't matter for either, gain six bucks. Any questions on outpatient? Good, moving on. <laughs> Treatment rooms and operating rooms are exactly the same. One patient 
for each doctor to a maximum of two patients and two doctors. So we have one patient, a yellow patient, and one doctor. So that's okay. If the patient matches the doctor's color, no nurses are necessary. However, for each color difference in either direction, one nurse is required to treat the patient. So a white doctor, which is a lowest level doctor, needing to treat a yellow patient needs one nurse. Does that make sense? Because to bo basically the nurse, nurse practitioner helps the doctor treat a more advanced patient. That also is the case going the other way. So you have a highly overqualified doctor needing to treat this yellow patient. Basically, it's beneath them. He's a little haughty, a little full of himself. So in that case, requires a nurse practitioner to actually bridge that gap going the other way. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So regardless of which direction it is, does not matter. That's now a successful treatment. Okay. There is no limit to the number of nurses that can be in a given room. So if this were, say, a red patient and a white, a red patient and a white doctor, you would need how many nurses? Two. Try again. Three. Three. There you go. I'm Why? Missing. White to yellow yellow to orange, orange to red. So you would act, this patient would not get treated, which means they're going to die because he's red and it doesn't go higher than red. But as it is, we can treat that patient there, which is awesome. Why? Because each successfully matched patient and doctor with an associated nurse or nurses are gonna get you paid. How much are they gonna get you paid? If it's a red patient, 32 bucks. An orange patient, 20, a yellow patient, 12, a white patient, eight bucks. So in our case, yellow patient, yellow patient gets me 12 bucks. Awesome. All of that income is set aside. Do not add it to your existing money. Just like in an 18XX, you have two banks. You have previous money and you have earned money. So I need 12 bucks for my treatment of this. And let's say I just go ahead and set this up here because that's the money that I earned this round. This patient then goes on their merry way, but they also take a car with them. The patient is out of the game permanently. The car will go back into the supply. So the patient is out of the game. The car will go back into the supply easy enough, okay? untreated or unsuccessfully treated patients remain and they're going to get worse at the end of the round. Red patients die and there's a penalty for that. We'll go over that here a little bit later. Now that we've gained our money, we're now going to pay our expenses, okay? Oh, I suppose I should also point out that each garden that overlooks a treated patient earns every patient or earns you an extra two bucks. Basically, they're paying for a nicer view out of their hospital room. Okay. All right. So the expenses that you have to pay depends on what's in your hospital. So let's take a look at our hospital now. What do we have? We have a total of one white doctor, a white doctor. You're going to pay doctors based on their experience level or their, their current level. That is $4 for a red doctor all the way down to $1 for a white doctor, three to descending going down there. All nurses and orderlies cost you a buck. And hey, the nice thing about orderlies is they reduce your total payment for $3. Then for every tile, you're gonna pay $1. So let's look again here. So we have one, two, three, one nurse, four, and a white doctor for five bucks. Okay, I do not have any operating rooms. Operating rooms cost an extra two bucks. Remember, if they were used, because you have to sterilize it. If it wasn't used, you don't have to re-sterilize it. So that makes sense. So I owe five bucks for this. You don't have to pay for entrances. However, you do have to pay upkeep, a dollar for every parking lot that you have. Okay, and you pay a groundskeeper to tend to that garden as well. So that's an extra buck, but I don't have any of those. So I owe five bucks out of the 12 bucks that I have. So instead, 
I have a total of seven bucks. Okay, easy enough? Good, all right. If I didn't have enough to pay my expenses, then I can pay my expenses out of the money that I had that I didn't spend this round. If I couldn't cover it then, now I'm in trouble. I lose for every $1 that I could not pay, I owe one popularity point, meaning I go down the track up into zero, and if you're at zero, the game takes pity on you, you're so pathetic, you're not popular at all, you don't owe anymore, so you don't go into debt. So at least there's that, okay? But as it is, I had enough. I have seven bucks left over. Now, now, finally, I can gain some points at the cost of $3 per point. So I have seven bucks. I can either choose to keep it. I could buy one point or I could buy two. Let's say I choose to, I spend six bucks. Pink would move up two points. Awesome. There we go. I'm winning the game. Easy enough. However, any money that I have left over that I choose not to spend then goes into my bank and this will never be spent on popularity the entire game. Now I can use it to be able to build stuff and everything else and it's also a, uh, a slush fund to be able to pay if I'm short any rounds but I cannot use it to buy victory points and victory point popularity is victory points which is the goal of the game. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, we're almost done. Moving now into the third phase, which is administration, which is basically a get ready for the next round phase. So here we go. We're going to do this quick, hot and heavy. Make sure there's at least one service hub for each of the five types available, meaning all four. We all start with a psychiatric. So there's going to be four service hubs up there. There's going to be one of each special module of each type. There are four types like so, but there is one less there's one less than the number of players, meaning there's only going to be three of each. So if three of those have been built, the fourth player doesn't get to build one. Sorry, playing better, okay? Then remove any patients that are over here on the far right edge in the X, in the red area. Then everything is going to immediately slide to the right, right? Because there's going to be gaps. Then level up each doctor, one color that's in the university. Meaning if this is what it was, let's say it were like this, we would draw one more doctor there we go, go ahead, draw, yeah, perfect. We draw that, it doesn't matter where they, they go, not to fill the space, but it always goes from most experience down to least experience. So even if he had drawn, an, let's say, that one got hired and we drew one like so, these guys would just, or gals, would then slide up and that would fill in like so. Does that make sense? Okay, good, all right. So we'll actually do like so, I think. Two orange. Two there we go. All right, cool. So we leveled up one doctor in the university, then remove any nurses from the existing round that were not hired. Then if a player has a doctor in a lab, and a lab looks a whole lot like this building, if they had a doctor that wasn't treating patients, they were in here studying, that doctor levels up two levels. Awesome, so he goes from a white doctor to an orange doctor. And, and now you gain one popularity. Important to note, this happens after everything else. That's going to matter for tiebreaker and for turn order stuff, okay? Every other doctor that is in a player's clinic, anywhere out here, if they're not in a lab, if you're not getting better, that means you're getting worse, which means they will drop down one level. So if, for instance, that yellow patient that I had treated, maybe I didn't need that nurse and that was a yellow doctor, well, that yellow doctor now at this point becomes a white doctor because they weren't able to keep up with the latest in medical procedures, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every doctor, if they're not in a lab, gets worse. If they're in a lab, they go up to and you gain a popularity. All right. Then every patient on a player's board gets worse one level. What does that mean? Well, I got this patient over here. That means from the extra supply that are out of the game, we're going to sub out that patient for one worse level. If they, can, they continue to get worse until they die or they get treated. If they're red and they die, you lose five popularity. Don't let that happen. 
Okay. Then? Oh, isn't it three? Is it? Three. Oh, I'm sorry. You lose three. I apologize, not five. My bad. I'm trying to make it worse. It's the heavy cardboard variant. Can't you lose though. three. Sorry about that. <laughs> then, last but not least, we're going to reset turn order. Now, turn order is in reverse order of popularity, i.e. victory points. Okay? So, I have the most points. I'm going to go last. If it were something along the lines of, say, this at the end of a round. Green would go first. Then it would be... Well, I... <laughs> it would be like so. Per or pink got to that space first. Ergo, they're more popular. So whoever reaches that space afterwards is a little bit less popular, meaning they are a little bit worse, which means they go later or earlier in turn order, which may be beneficial for you for what it is you're trying to do. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Let's go over game end and final scoring now. After six rounds, the game ends, in addition to the popularity that you bought during the game. You gain popularity at the end of the game as follows. Employees. Let's say this is it. For each Red Doctor, gain five points. That's only possible if they were in a lab at the end of the game. Because they will have dropped down one level, right? Unless they were in a lab. Each Orange Doctor gains you four. A yellow three, a, doctor, a white doctor two, and for every nurse that's in here, you're going to gain one popularity as well. Treatment rooms. Now you're going to notice here, treatment rooms, these are victory points or popularity points. For each treat, legal treatment room, functioning treatment room that you have on a higher level will get you the associated points as shown on there. Then buildings, separate buildings. As I, Remember earlier I built this one and then I built another building over here. For each additional building that you have on your campus, you get eight points or eight popularity. On the flip side, for each patient that's left on your board, period, you're gonna lose eight, six, four, and two points respectively, depending on their level. Eight for red, down to two for white. And then time spent. So wherever you are, if I'm over here and I've spent 42 time over the course of a game, I will lose 14 points. Three points for each, uh, one point for each three time that I've spent. Okay? Whoever has the most points wins or most popularity. Now, there is no tiebreaker per se in this game, but this is an important point. Going back to turn order for scoring, that happens in turn order because whoever arrives somewhere first, they are more popular, ergo, there's your tiebreaker. Whoever scored it, that tied value high first, is the winner, or gets the higher place. And that, folks, is how you play Clinic Deluxe. Whew, all right, I'm done. Thank you and good night. <laughs> all right, I have a butchered game board, or a uh, player board, so if you guys will give us a couple minutes, I will go ahead and bring up the cameras and the chat there and there. There we go. All right. I hope that was clear for everybody. Any questions locally? I'm a puddle. Okay. Yeah. What? Yep. All right. Any, any, <laughs> any questions in the peanut gallery that you guys know? No? All right. So if you guys will give me a second, I'm going to completely clear off my board. So then, and give me a hand here. Um, so let's we need see. that nurse. I need a nurse there. Those can go away. This can go away. I know it's a lot of information up front, y'all, and it is a like I said, a hard game. However, um, hopefully, being able to play it after the fact will help you guys make heads or tails of it. If you can put these back in their appropriate places, I have those. All of so can you have the going? same medical room on different floors of the same building? No. Well, when you say medical room, there, there the is specific, there service is, okay. hub. So here you go. You may have one service hub of each type, period. And it must be on different floors or in different buildings. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the blue special buildings, these you are only allowed one type or one of each type, I should say, meaning one of those four. The end. Is that clear? Does okay. that answer the question? I think so. I think one thing you uh, miss as well, if, oh, if you buy 
this particular service hub. Right. And nobody else can. Well, yeah, I, I yeah. figured this that was round. implied because it's not there. Because I mentioned that if it was bought at the at, during the round, we then replenish it from the off-board stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. I figured yeah. that was implied. We have the bonus markers that are here for the beginning of the game. I'm actually going to take this stuff back down for the very beginning. I apologize. There we go. So we have the bonus markers here. To be able to start, we need a randomized turn order. And we'll go worst to first. All right, here we go. Where's the first? Brown. Yay. Pink. Yeah. Green, which means purple. Yay. All right, now in reverse turn order, what we are going to do, first off, place your bets in over under on glory to realms. I'm going to say four and a half. That feels like a good number. We'll see. Here are the bonuses that we have out here. We have start the game with one orderly. They come with cars, but they are free. And these also do not come from the board out here. They come from, the, let me have show those two. These are the excess supply. These are not the ones that are in the bags. The reason is for being able to change out patients and doctors as they get better or worse. Those are extra and those will be come in the game as well. Mm -hmm. So you get one orderly, one nurse, five bucks, a white patient. The white patient specifically is a psychiatric patient or you upgrade one doctor immediately, your one white doctor that everybody starts with, with one yellow doctor instead. That said, Mr. Rand, it is your honor. Choose. All right, I'll go ahead and take, um, I'll take the orderly. All right, so minus $3 for all of your costs. So right. this then is removed from the game. We're just gonna throw that away, Ooh. good. All right, so then that's going to be me. Um, so I'm looking at this. There's only one yellow patient out here. I like the idea of getting the white patient to begin with. It was kind of nice. Um, yeah. I have no idea. Um, you know what? I'm late in turn order. That really kind of sucks. But you know what? I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to take the nurse, okay? So I will take the nurse. The nurse is going to go onto my entrance, as you can see there. There we go. So the nurse then will go away. And remember, they also come with cars. I forgot. So I'm going to, and Rand gets a car for his orderly as well. So I have to place it like so. J-Rex, five bucks, an upgraded doc, or a psychiatric patient. Um, and when you're hiring, you get a doc and one nurse or orderly, right? Right. It's one from the university and one, one, one from the uh, right from the community college. Um. Hmm. So that's not super beneficial. No. Siddharth, you can have one of each of these, period. I don't care if they're on the same floor or different floor. You can have one of each of these. These must be on different floors, though. Okay, yeah. go ahead. There's no wrong choice here, there honestly. There is, clearly. Well, I, yeah, obviously, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I know which ones I personally value, but... I don't see anything, so... I'll, Go there. But then I Thanks, Chip. I appreciate it. I'll take the five. My thinking is those doctors are only one, two, or four. Sure. So it seems less valuable to get a take your quiche. Yellow. All right. Doctor. And uh, I apologize uh -huh. ahead of time, real quick. Before we uh, go ahead, choose yours. Real yellow quick. doctor. All right, yellow doctor. No extra car. Which the extra patient then goes out of play. Boom, there. So, obviously, it's a four-player game. I could have zoomed way out, but you guys lose this, and I don't want that. So, right now, we only have two floors visible for Jess, two for Rand, and Greg's is going to be off-camera. If you guys ever want to see it, I just ask me. I can zoom out. And during the build, you guys are going to be playing along with me and making fun of me and seeing how bad I do. Because, again, I struggle mightily with this, and my doctor should start out there as well. All right. Whew. All right. So now we actually 
<laughs> build. So everyone is going to start by building their stuff out here. Okay, so decide how you want to build. I started with an extra entrance. I apologize there. Um, I'm going to go, do I do this? Mm. So here's what I'm struggling with while everyone else is struggling with theirs. So a service module has to start with an entrance next to it. So I'm just going to put it here in the corner to keep it simple. It must be adjacent to a, tr uh, or the treatment room must be adjacent to it to be a viable treatment room. And the treatment room must be directly adjacent to a supply room. So my option is basically I could put this there, there, or there to make that usable. But if I do this, and I'm thinking out loud here, okay, so let's see. If I put the supply room down here, I can put a treatment room there, I can put a supply module there, or I'm sorry, a service module there, and a treatment room here, which will be adjacent to that. I'm good with that. That's how I'm going to go. I have two folks, two staff, I have two cars, that's the best um, yes, final answer, done. There we go. Also, Siddharth, the, uh, the emission room change, it seems a little weird at first. I thought it was a little weird, but when I started using it, it worked. It, it does. So, I assure you, everything that I just told you is current up to today's rules. Yep. That's the best I got. Okay.